Dynamic short-term shifts in the gaming sector that resulted in various unfortunate layoffs is now being used as a call to arms to divert from making AAA games? What? Join us for my response to Destin Legary. The answer is not less AAA games. This is the medicine. Let's get into this one. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K of Geeks, Cloud Dosage, Hard Knock Digital Culture, back again with another episode of The Medicine. And like I said, this one is titled, My Response to Destin Legary. The answer is not less AAA games. But before we get into this one, do us a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and rock those bells for notifications, please. It allows you to know when we are dropping these doses. We appreciate all of your support straight up. All right. So let's get into this one. Um, the story is Sony laid off 900 people recently, right? And I want to address the inspiration for this video, Destin Legary, but let me first explain what happened with Sony. Sony laid off 900 people. They felt like that they had 900 synergies that they needed to make because of what's been going on in the gaming market. Um, the gaming market did a lot of hiring during the pandemic because a lot of people were at home playing video games. And now that dynamic is no longer the case for gamers. Gamers are back to the regular two-step of life in gaming. And so they're not so focused on gaming as they were. So a lot of the projects, a lot of the things that these companies wanted to do in gaming that was based upon activity from the pandemic has not been sustained. So therefore, it's not sustainable to keep those people. That's what's not sustainable, all right, is keeping these people for the recorrection in the market. Okay. Um, so that's what happened. Sony, even though they had a great quarter, even though they fell short of a ridiculous 25 million um, console sold, they had a great quarter, great financials, all that stuff. But on the heels of it, and the announcement of Spider Man 2 still selling 10 million copies, over 10 million, which is phenomenal based upon when it was released they still had to cut 900 people. But again, that was because of the shifts in the market and the planning that they did and the poor, the really the poor planning that the market did all together and thinking that the trends of the pandemic were going to be sustained, all right? So that is the story. With that said, I want to get into Destin Legary, right? and some things that he said that really inspired this video. But before I get into all that, I wanna make some things abundantly clear. First and foremost, I do not wanna make this a personal attack video. This video is merely addressing the logic behind an agenda. And we all have agendas, like mine is to ensure gamers know all the facts to make the best purchasing decisions for themselves. In this case, the agenda appears that many are trying to make an excuse for their heavy backing and king making of Xbox's failed strategy in the past under Phil Spencer, while Phil and Xbox were trying to compete with Sony. Simply put, it did not work. So in comes the excuses on why they made so many heavy handed predictions that simply never came true. Saving face, damage control, salvaging their credibility, call it what you want. Just understand this, that the tactic now is to claim that Xbox all along made all the right decisions. And it's just now they have to drastically change because of the market. Now understand, trying to create false equivalence, equivalencies between Xbox and why they made their shift in a completely different lane and what I just explained explain about what PlayStation is going through and I'm gonna get into that a little bit later, trying to make false equivalencies between those two is just one part of the excuse campaign. The other part is trying to explain away Xbox's inability to compete in a AAA genre defining space of the platform war. And that part is as follows. So in describing that part, if you wanna be successful in all this spin, right? 
why not just put an albatross on AAA games altogether? Because shh, Xbox isn't good at making them. <laughs> With that said, let's read Destin's comments so you can better understand the focus of this video, right? And in order to do that, you know how we do. Let me show you something. All right. So Destin sent out a couple of tweets in lieu of all this stuff happening. Tweet number one is, I think companies need to realize that you don't need to be on the bleeding edge of tech to be successful. Spider-Man 2 kind of proved this sadly. Did all the bells and whistles help sales? Not really, according to Sony. And I hope that the layoffs of 2023, 2024 get budgets and scope in check to prevent any kind of crash. So this is trying to put some false equivalency again even though spider-man 2 was successful the tailwinds of everything that was affecting sony was not going to be solved by spider-man 2 alone i mean did sony themselves have some false litmuses and believing that maybe spider-man 2 and other games could push them to 25 million consoles sold in a fiscal year yeah but there was no belief system that spider-man was going to save anything everything that's ridiculous and we're gonna die we're gonna deep dive into why destin is just pulling this out of somewhere but it ain't reality all right but let's go to destin's second tweet here where he again continues his campaign against triple a games now the albatross is around price right maybe the answer isn't a hundred dollar games and it's more forty dollar games right okay so again when I use words like ridiculous and absurdity, I, I want to make it abundantly clear I'm attacking the ridiculousness and the absurdity around the agenda and, and the thought process, not not the person. Okay. So in order for us to do this, let's go on to let's do multiple section breakdowns. Section number one is why is this happening? We gotta examine why this is happening. Okay. So now, in order for us to look at that. Let me show you this. This is a tweet that I sent. Okay. And, and, and it was inspired. Even though I didn't quote tweet them, it was inspired by what Dustin said. Just by the sheer number of marketing driven layoffs, not consolidation redundancies. All right. And I talk more about that in my previous podcast where I addressed the 900 plus layoffs at Sony. Definitely check that out. If this video doesn't root you there or send you there um, after it's done, um, I say again, just by the sheer number of market driven layoffs, not consolidation redundancies, we could see a correction happening. That means reverting back pre pandemic where triple A's were still expensive yet heavily sought. So, no, the answer isn't a flood of $40 games to replace triple A games. All right. Examples of expensive games pre-pandemic are games, exclusive games, like God of War and Last of Us 2. Like for instance, if, if you don't believe here, let, 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 me, let me show you this. There are multiple reports out there trying to detail and, and analyze how much God of War costs. The God, when I say God of War, I mean the God of War reboot of 2018, right? When you look at that game, that game cost around for the various reports anywhere between a hundred million plus or 150 million plus, right? That's still expensive. Not quite the 300 million that um, Spider-Man cost. But if you look at the price of Spider-Man and look at the revenue that it's brought in, it's brought in over 200 million more than God of War, right? Right, okay. But there are more examples. This isn't necessarily exclusive, but these are AAA games, right? That definitely pulled in a lot of cash. Let's look at Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now that cost 500 million to make, reportedly but it brought in around a billion dollars that's crazy if we even go back 12 years right or 13 years to elder scrolls 5 skyrim 
even 13 years ago, the game cost a hundred million and it only brought in 620 million in comparison to what uh, Spider-Man is bringing in already. <laughs> Just a few months after launch, right? Okay, so hopefully we understand that AAA genre defining games in the market for them isn't always the biggest margin market, but there's a lot of money involved, okay? So it isn't that the market is unsustainable, okay? Stop using conglomerate rhetoric to excuse them fleecing consumers. As you saw, Spider-Man, when you do the math, it made 700 million, even though it cost 315 million. These other games are still making hundreds of millions of dollars. It's not that the market is unsustainable. Stop using that rhetoric. Unsustainable means profitability margins is lost almost entirely. So let's just say if Spider-Man cost $315 million to make, but it only brought in $350 million, or it only brought in $300 million, that's unsustainable. Margin simply right now, because of a variety of factors, particularly in Sony's case, margins is simply, uh, it's not as, the ceiling is not as high as it used to be for the moment. And when we talk about margins, margins is simply the percentage made back for every dollar invested. So when we look at the margins that video games are getting now, it's similar to oil companies. For like a, you make a dollar, you make $2 for every dollar that you invest, right? The last time I checked, oil companies are doing just fine off the off of similar margins. It's just not as high as it used to be. That And, and that does affect how attractive an investment is and, and to a more of a bullish investor. However, a lot of money is still being made here. A lot of it. And other feasible solutions exist to address the margins if they want to see margins that they used to see in years past. There are other things that they can do. So it's not all hands on deck. The, the gaming uh, market is no longer profitable. Things are horrible. No, they overcompensated for a trend that they thought would be long term and systemic and it only ended up being temporary. So they're making adjustments based upon that. These profitability margins on AAA games, they're fluctuating and they're on the lower end of what they've been in the last few years. But again, $315 million Spider-Man, only just a few months out, it's already at 700 million in revenue. Stop it, okay? It made more money than than Skyrim. <laughs> Skyrim was, was sold on everything, okay? So when we talk about the case of Sony, again, their problem isn't simply AAA sustainability. I want to show you guys something else. This is an excellent tweet from Derek Strickland of Tweaktown. I want to, I'm going to give you a link. I'm going to provide a link in the description or the comment section below of this video. And Derek is far from a PlayStation fanatic. He's, he's more of a Xbox enthusiast. He does a lot of stuff on Xbox. Think of, think of Tom Warren when it comes to the enthusiasm towards Xbox, right? I'm not going to I'm, I'm not gonna do that to Derek and, and slander his work and say it's exactly like Tom. We love you, Tom. But still, Derek, I, I love a, most of his stuff that he puts out there. All right. So here it goes. A quick glance reveal some of the culprits when addressing Sony's games division and why the PlayStation operating profits or the margins are lower than what they usually are, right? And those uh, culprits are increasing game development costs. Like, yeah, we are seeing game development costs increase, but that's not it. More importantly, it's horse historically unfavorable exchange rates that are happening. You're hearing that the exchange rates with the yen, all right, the Japanese is, is, is having an effect, a negative impact on Sony's profits. Um, acquisition costs. 
Sony made a bunch of acquisitions game wise or SIE did and they're still paying on them well Sony and SIE made them and they're still paying those off they don't expect for the 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 payoff to be complete until the beginning of fiscal year 2024 which I believe for Sony starts in June of 2024 and last but certainly not least the lower PS5 profitability right and that's driven by the fact that even though there are some small parts like buttons and, and drive bays or whatever that may have went down in price, you still have significant price hikes and the chips. Chips are still um, expensive and hard to come by. And they're not just affected by the chips that they need for their consoles. The fact that the producers of these other parts th that they're buying from other um, wholesalers they're affected by the chip price and the chip margins. So they've raised the price on their stuff. So the buttons that are supplied to Sony or the cords or the technology behind this and that, the dual sets or whatever, anything that's that's um, that that's third party has a price hike. So even though the price may have went down from at the beginning of the PlayStation 5 launch, they're still not lower than last gen. And this is new for Sony. Because they're a manufacturing company, um, as far as as well as a tech company to a degree, and they're used to getting cheaper prices than what they're seeing now. All right. So in review, when we look at the roadblocks in Sony's case, they are less systemic than what a Microsoft is dealing with, and why Microsoft simply can't compete in this space because of how they're built, how they're designed, the personnel that they have, the expectations set uh, from their CEO, who is heavily driven in the cloud and as far as subscription services are. Having that mindset, you can't compete in the space. Microsoft finally realized that and they're moving away from it. Completely different from the scale back that we're seeing from Sony, all right? So if that is the case, what is the actual solution? What is the actual solution here? As far as what Sony is dealing with. Let's talk those actual solutions by first looking at the second end of my comment. Right? Addressing what Destin Legary had to say. I say the answer is our top talent not finding solace and being absorbed. The literal definition of not selling out. Independent studios need to find smart alternative funding sources like Larian, while big companies need to explore more quality driven yet less expensive technologies. When I bring up Larian, I'm talking about the fact that they use early access and act early access during exclusivity to help fund them. Then the early access with people, you know, the, the, the most rabid fans wanting to get an early a vertical slice of the game. They use that to fund and then the rest is history. And then they, they, they gave it some time. They gave it some time to bake and be just right. And the rest is history. And that's how you get a game of the year from an independent studio. Right. When we talk about the technologies, I want you guys to pay close attention to something. Here's an example of such that the industry just rejected. And you could have been part of that. This right here, my friends, is an article from gamesindustry.biz where they interviewed former Stadia R&D head Erin Hoffman John. She talks about experiments in using new tech to create assets and balance gameplay. I want you to look at this picture because before I read this, I want you to understand that Aaron Hoffman John is one of the most intellectual and cerebral people out there. And I, I during Stadia's tenure, I, I, or during her tenure at Stadia, and a little bit beyond, I've had the, the pleasure of talking to her, like you know, on Twitter and stuff like that, and just picking her brain at different things. Um, it, it's a real shame that this project didn't see the light of day because people didn't understand what stadia was and how it could benefit them they were too busy chasing headlines and you know a lot of the stuff that they're doing now believing stuff like what we're addressing from destin legary instead of understanding how things work simply put in a world where we are entertained by calling people out of their names and cursing them out for their opinions 
it's good to have some type of intellectual palate cleanser to thwart that brain rot <laughs> that is, is so attached to, to just consuming social media and not doing your homework. Uh, to this day, I'm amazed after years of providing details myself that predicted so many of these outcomes, how much of you still want to cling to a lie? That's due to a lack of intellectual sustenance, such as needed when discussing tech, so do yourself a favor. I'll leave a link to this article. Don't only check this article out, but just look for her period on the internet. You will be a better person because of it. But let's address what Aaron Hoffman John has to say about this planned Project Chimera. So Project Chimera was a pie in the, pie in the sky idea behind Project Chimera was someday that machine learning tools would allow 20, a 20 person development team to create a game as large and as complex as World of Warcraft. But Hoffman readily acknowledges that's a bit far off. So the idea was to start with using machine learning to streamline development. Hoffman John notes, that for many actual CG, uh, CCGs or developers, the bulk of work and budget rests on uh, contracted artists who paint and design the various cards. Hoffman John said on such a strategy, uh, on such strategy games, for instance, about 70% of development time and investment is spent on generating content in a repetitive way, like making small variations of monsters to populate the world. It's not the creative stuff that game developers really want to be doing. Hoffman John said, it's the stuff you have to do to fill out the content pipeline so the world seems rich. So that is the type of stuff that I say technology wise that we need in gaming, that these big conglomerates need. Something that isn't going as far as what Microsoft is proposing to, you know, be as far as AI in development and, and, and it being part of the creative and the, the thing that got developers all in a frenzy but something that just handles the grunt work. The grunt work, which is expensive. The grunt work that required, I think for The Last of Us 2, that, you know, to, to try to deal with some of the crunch, I think, was it Naughty Dog? It was either Naughty Dog or, or, or um, uh, Rockstar that hired 2,000 contractors to do this grunt work right before the launch of, of their game. It was either Naughty Dog with Last of Us or um, Rockstar with Red Dead Redemption 2, or it was probably both. This can this can take care of that type of stuff and let the creators be creative and the big conglomerates, you know, get better margins because of it because it's going to take lo less to make the game, right? So with all that said, what is the actual solution? Well, the actual solution or the takeaways are people feel like their credibility is on the line and maybe rightfully so. Therefore, they are making bad faith correlations and hope to excuse their mistakes. Your job is simply do not fall for it. If you're one, if you're huge on AAA consumption of genre defining content, then here's what you need to do. First, advocate for more developer independence. Support those who don't sell out and call out those who do. Tell these companies also too that they better start investing in quality inspired cost efficient tools like the aforementioned Project Chimera that don't spoil the creative functions but remove the hefty and expensive grunt work. And three, most important, be informed. Don't just belong to these zealot camps that argue and pull you in a direction that is completely void of your best gaming interest. All right. With that said, that's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below, because like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. They will lead you again to Geeks, Cloud Dosage, and Hard Knock Digital Culture. With that said, peace. Have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day.